I just want to open with prayer. Lord Jesus, as your word being preached today, let it fall on fertile ground. Lord, you are our hope. You are our love. You are our all in all. That every word that we hear shall speak to every individual here today and even myself. Yeah, though I have prepared, but Lord Jesus, you use me as a vessel to share your word. Yeah, your life, your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The message today is titled Confidence in Christ, Our Confidant. I will explain um, more. So what is confidence? Confidence, I think everyone would easily, easily know what confidence is. Confidence is gained through experience. People have confidence when you have more information on something, on a subject matter. Even when you started work, you will have, people will teach you how to do certain work and then you advance and then you learn and then you have confidence to, to do the work that you are tasked to do. So confidence is gained through experience. So even people who take exams, so I believe nobody now is taking exam. I see. Oh, um, maybe we have got one or two person or maybe I said, oh, and Mark, we have people who take exam, we learn through school in order for us to take exam. Nowadays, I know that in school, there is no more exam. It's, they actually do this class-based assessment. So don't have like every, every time, but I think different school, different, uh, different ways. So basically what I'm trying to say is that even before in preparation to take the exam itself, students will need to learn. Students need to learn. So when, you, when students learn and get more information or they learn about the subject itself, they get confidence. They gain confidence on how to answer the exam. Because we learn. We learn. So in anything, we learn throughout our journey in our life. And that's how we gain confidence. So this is the natural way of having confidence. The confidence in Christ, what the Bible says about confidence in Christ. Because the confidence in Christ is not like what the, conf what the world offers. Yeah. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who believes... Okay, I'm reading from Amplified Bible. New King James says that, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. The Amplified Bible would expound it a little bit more. Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord. So confidence in Christ is when we rely in Him. We believe and we trust in Him. And whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. So the more we experience God, to sum it up, the more we experience God, the more we know God. Actually, our confidence level in Him will increase. The more we will grow to know Him. You see, Psalm 71.5 state this, For you are my hope. O Lord God, you are my trust from my youth. You are my trust and the source of my confidence. In Amplified Bible says that, God is the source of our confidence. The Bible said that. So basically, nothing else is the source of our confidence. Our confidence is not in the, the information that we, that we have, we know. The more we know on certain subject is good. I'm not saying that it's not good. But our first and foremost, foremost is that 
our confidence is in the Lord and the Lord is the source of our confidence. You see, God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Right? He is the perfecter of our faith. He's the source of faith in itself. So we do not just believe in Jesus. We do not know when we faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What does it mean here? Meaning to say that we believe because we are convinced of Him, of what Christ has done on the cross for us. So we are, we are totally convinced, okay, Jesus has done this. So, and, but the thing is, the faith itself, right, we believe in Christ first, but then it doesn't stop there because we need to have this confidence. We need to grow our confidence. How do we grow this confidence in Him? It is actually by spending more time with Him. So, Hebrew, let me see. Hebrew 11, 11, 11 1 says that, I want to read from Amplified Bible. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things, you know, what we don't see and the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. In Hebrew, Hebrew 11.3 says that the world is formed from the things not seen. It is formed from the word of God. In Hebrews 11.3 says that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The word of God is spoken word. The word of God, we don't see it, we hear it. We see it as in the end result is proven by the by what we see. You know, things are seen were not made of things which are visible. So we believe. Come, I come back to this. What I want to say is that I think you all do you understand what I'm trying to point out here? That faith is. We do not stop at faith, at believing what Christ has done. But then we need to have this confidence in Christ. And confidence in Christ is not like the confidence that we have of what we know. Because it's experiential knowledge. We need to experience God. We need to experience Christ. It is not just about knowing the Bible so much. But we need to experience Christ himself. We need to experience him. You know? So it doesn't stop at faith. Yes, good. We believe. We believe. We believe Jesus saves all of us. You know, He is the, our Redeemer. That's a redemption plan for all people. But yet, how do we grow? How do we grow? We need to experience Him. So, in Luke 5.20, Okay, before this, I want to say that in Luke 5.20, the background is, the verse before this is actually saying that there was this paralytic man. He, they, he and his friends, they wanted to approach Jesus. So the crowd was massive. There were so many people. And the friend couldn't even bring the paralytic man to Jesus. So what they thought of was, they lowered, they go up to the roof and they lowered the man through the roof, right in front of Jesus. So when Jesus see, when he saw their faith, he said to him, to them, man, your sins are forgiven. Your sins forgiven you. So in Amplified Bible, it says that when Jesus saw their active faith springing from confidence in him, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. So, the way I see it, faith is active. You know, they have confidence that Jesus will do something or Jesus does something for this paralytic friend, um, for their friend, for this paralyzed man. They, they see something. So, they believe that Jesus will do something to him. 
They believe in Christ. So that's why they acted out of faith. When they believe, they acted out of faith and lower the friend. They find ways and lower the friend to Jesus. And then, what happened? Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. So they are experiencing Christ. They are experiencing what Jesus is doing in their life. In these words that I see. So, what I want to say here is that we need to have confidence in the source. And Jesus is that source of our confidence. I have a friend whom I recently met and she was sharing that she has gone through quite a lot of um, up and down the journey. The journey in her life was up and down. When I say up and down, she's an intercessor. Well, um, she's an intercessor. So she, throughout the journey, it's like the moment she has picked herself up, then she finds herself being hammered down again. So then she picked herself up again. And then again, the, the, um, different, different things that's happening in her journey, in her life. So many things that's happening. Um, I'm not saying anyone from this church is a friend from outside. <laughs> just in case if you're wondering who is that person, you know, you are just looking. So it's not anyone from this church. So it's a friend of mine from outside. So, so she was sharing that. She came to this point that she, she told God that, God, I had enough. It's just enough. You know, she can't take it anymore. It's just like enough. You know, I just give it to you, God. I give it all to you. You know, you just do what you want to do with my life. And soon you know what happened. Uh, of course, she didn't know. God sent someone to pray for her. She was actually in an evangelistic outreach. Uh, I would say evangelistic outreach. Um, she went to the street um, to share. And after the evangelistic thing of course they were so safe and then suddenly because she was teamed up with a pastor so this pastor she suddenly just um, told, told, told her no you come here come here I want to bless you I want to pray for you so the pastor doesn't know what she was going through in her life she doesn't know what's the up and down that she was going through you know it's like many rounds she keep on going up and down up and down so the pastor just blessed and she took all in she received it because she needed it. That is the first prayer. The second one, she said that she was out with a friend. Then the friend, she shared very little about concerning what happened to her, just very little. And there were some things that she didn't share to this particular friend. So what happened was that the friend dropped her off at the RT station. And then, um, where she my, uh, this friend of mine, she actually took the RT home. But that friend who dropped her off suddenly felt the unction to stop the car and park one side to pray for her. So the friend prayed and texted her the prayer. And my friend told me that the prayer that, that the friend prayed for her is so accurate is because nobody knows, only her husband knows. Only her husband knows what she went through and only her husband knows that what the conversation that she had with husband is only like on Sunday and, and this, this person was praying only on Tuesday. So And this person do not know the conversation with her husband because she never tell. So you see, that's the third. Uh, sorry, that's the a, that's a second one. Third one. Third one, she received, she went for a meeting that she was thinking that she's not going to go for this meeting. You know, because this meeting is gathering people for evangelistic. So it's a prayer meeting as well. So, But she didn't feel that she wanted to go. So she was like thinking, maybe she just go and check it out. And maybe she'll just, if she doesn't want that, she just go off. I'm sharing this with permission from her. I, I actually did ask her for permission if I can actually share this. So she says, okay. So... So basically, when she was at the meeting, everyone there was asked to share something about themselves, why they are there in the meeting. 
So in her honest, honest opinion is that she told the people there that actually I do not know why I'm there. <laughs> Very honest, she doesn't know why she was there. So of course she shared a little bit of the dreams that she received. So you know what happened? Lo and behold, the people there said, you are here, we are going to pray for you. You know, it's like the meeting, she said everyone in the meeting was praying for her. And the whole, the whole meeting was just to pray for her. So you, what I want to say here is that when you're going through up and down in your life, God knows He will send people or he, there will be someone. That's always, God will make a way. So like this, nobody knows what my friend goes through. The up and downs, nobody knows. You know, and these three people who pray for her, they know nothing. But yet, she was very, very encouraged. And you know what she told me? She told me, you know, my confidence is in the Lord, in Him, and it is not in my own. It's exactly, it is true. Our confidence is not our own. Our confidence is in Him. Because in Christ, He will never fail you. He will never fail you, nor forsake you. So our confidence, if we rely on confidence in ourselves, what we know, how we need to do things, it may fail us. You know, I've heard like, when people place their expectation and their hope on their family members, on their husband, on their spouse, there are people who actually, you know, when, when their spouse passed away, they couldn't take it. They had mental breakdown. So our confidence needs to be in the Lord because He is the source of our confidence. I'm not saying that we don't love our loved ones, we don't love our spouse or our family members or our friends, but we cannot place our confidence in them, our expectation in them. We need to expect, our expectation is on the Lord. Confidence is on the Lord. So sometimes we do not know everything that happens. We don't understand. We may not have full understanding of everything. But yet, what we must do, we continue to trust in Him. Trust and obey. There is no other way but to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Remember this hymn? I don't know. Because I, I came from a, um, from a background where we sing Him. <laughs> So, trust and obey, there is no other way than to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So, the key thing is to continue to trust Him. To trust that He will get you out. That He will make a way for you. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways not in partial of your ways, in some of your ways, but in all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. It is in all our ways. Whether you, have, you know the way or not, also in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So we need to acknowledge Him. So, here comes, then I will say that we need to subscribe to Jesus continuously. You know, we need to subscribe. Our covenant with Christ is everlasting, is eternal. You know, Christ has um, paid the price. So when I say subscribe to Jesus, can you imagine our phone? We have subscription, right? Our handphone also. Everyone who has handphone here, you have subscription. Am I right? We pay the money every month. Whether it's 48 ringgit, 28 ringgit, 38 ringgit. Even postpaid also, prepaid also, you still need to pay. No pay, no usage. <laughs> so, the thing is, when we, pay, when we subscribe to a line itself, sometimes certain provider, they will have a contract basis, right? Sometimes two years, sometimes one year. You know, it, it's just to tie you down. But our contract with Jesus is forever. Our contract with Jesus is forever and He has paid it all. We don't have to pay every month. Jesus is the price. Jesus is that price. We don't need to pay. I thank God for Jesus. I really thank God for Jesus. 
So, but what happened is, you know, in our phone, uh, our phone plan, when we continue to pay subscription, what happened if we don't use it? You can also, some people can also pay a phone plan, right? Because it's so cheap, 28 ringgit or 5 ringgit every month. Because just to maintain the line, the number. But you don't benefit, ma. correct? You don't benefit from it. So can you imagine? Jesus has, our subscription in Jesus is lifetime. It is lifetime, so we can't take it for granted. Because it's lifetime, we need to tap on and have this communication with Him. We need to have this communication. We cannot just like, because it is, we subscribe to Jesus and we put it aside, just like the phone plan, you put the phone plan aside. But we need to continue, continuously use, not nice word to say use, but we need to continuously subscribe to Jesus, continuously tap on to His life. Because just now, in the beginning, I said that blessed is the man who believes and trusts and relies on the Lord. You are blessed when you rely on the Lord, when you tap on the Lord, when your confidence is in Him. You know, Jesus is waiting for people to come to Him. The prodigal son, the story of the pro prodigal son, he, you know, he left the father, you know, after so doing so many things outside. Then after that, he came back. But when he came back, the father is waiting with arms open to receive him. Likewise, the same as Jesus. He is always waiting with arms open to his children, waiting to receive us, regardless where you are and what you do. Revelation 3.20 Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Yes. He's waiting. You know, our subscription, our faith in him, he's, but he's waiting for us. He's knocking. He's knocking. He knocks. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. So we need to open. We need to open. And let him come into in our life. Let him dine with us. And likewise, we do. It's a relationship at the end of the day. So that's why in the beginning, when I said, I titled this, Confidence in, in Him, in Christ. Our confidant. What is this confidant? Does everyone here know the word confidant? Honestly, I actually don't know. When I received this, you know, when I was talking to King Ting um, about the message, that was uh, probably two, three weeks ago. I only received half of it. So then, as I was talking to him about confidence in Christ, then I see this word, confident, appearing. Then I was like, okay, okay, okay. Then I quickly asked him, actually, what's the word confident means? I don't know. Honestly, my English is not that good, Lord, that means. <laughs> so, but confident, just for the benefit of others, it's, it's a person whom you share your secret to. That's what confident is. And Christ is our confidant. Christ is the one whom we can share our deepest, most, and honestly we can share with Him. He is our confidant. It's a noun. It is a person. You know, we can share our secret. We can trust Him. He is our confidant. In my younger days, I used to, I used to share my actually complains. I used to share my the things that I, you know, in my workplace, what I'm not happy with or my boss, you know. I'm, maybe some of you have experienced that. You know, you're unhappy with your bosses or, or your employer or, 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 or work. Then you tend to complain. Either you complain to your mother or to your friends or complain to, you know, people. So I complained to a friend of mine, my close friend. 
I always, I will, I will call it complain. Uh. So I always, always call her. Every day maybe. <laughs> almost every day. But one day, actually I was doing that for many years. Many years. I always confide in this friend. It doesn't matter whether she actually share, uh, she, she tell me, she just listen. So I just share, just complain to her while sharing my days at work. But one fine day, I hear the Lord says, and I knew in my heart that God wants me to share to Him and not to other people. So this is how I realized that God is my confidant. He wants me to take Him as a friend, as a father. He wants me to rely in Him. He wants me to, to really believe Him. You know, He is not just like somebody that we cannot see. But he wants me to trust in him. That's why ultimately it's like faith is not just like we believe what Christ has done. But we need to fully, completely trust because our hope is in Christ. Yeah, so I learned that. So it's, that's when I put a stop because I know that God is talking to me. God, God wants me to... Actually, I don't, I don't think that God just wants me alone. But I think for everyone else. God wants to be your friend. God wants to be your partner. God wants to be your precious lover. Not just your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know. But God wants to be your lover. Really. So, our experience with God is two-way. It's a two-way communication. It's never just... God, I need this today. I need this. I need this. It's good that we communicate. But it's always a two-way communication. We need to hear. We need to hear from God. If we do not know how to hear, we need to learn. We need to make that step and learn how to hear. It's okay when you, when you are wrong. It is always okay. You know, um, I always have this, this thing in my mind that Last time, when we don't have handphone, when we need to meet with friends outside, then we set an appointment. This time I always got I, I share with Angie and then we, we talk about it and then we laugh about it. So what happened? Last time we don't have huh? young people, last time we don't have handphone one. So how do we meet our friends? We set a time. Let's say 11 a.m. meet at this particular place in KL. We will be there. Where got handphone? We have no handphone to say. I'm on the way. You know, sometimes people say, I'm on the way, but actually they're on the way from the toilet, on the way from somewhere else, you know. But the thing is, last time, we will just stay put. Whether the friend, if we say 11 a.m. is 11 a.m., the friend will come. Everyone, three, four people, everyone will just make their way there. So then we will just wait there. We don't go anywhere else. 11 a.m. is 11 a.m. We just wait there. Because we have no phone. Back then, I think, I think most people can relate with me here, the adults here, the older ones. You can relate, you know. And then, um, yeah, so basically, but not right now, we have handphone. So like the other time when I meet up with my friends, I can, I, oh, my friends all, oh, they were there at that place because it's flexible timing. So they will all say, oh, we are already here. Then I say, I'm actually still at home. <laughs> I'm coming out of the house soon. So, we get updates with one another in these present days. Thank God for technology. It actually makes lives easier. You know, we can communicate. Because it's like, we can communicate. And it's a two-way communication with our friends. We can, each other will update where their whereabouts is. So, we Christ, Christ wants to know your update too. Christ wants to know your update. This is new, huh? This one I didn't prepare. Huh? I'm also learning this. This is from straight from the oven. This is from God. God wants to know your update. Not, not just, you know, he, tell, he wants to know you. He wants to, you to encounter Him. So in every relationship, we learn about a person, right? When you have boyfriend, girlfriend, you learn about your boyfriend, girlfriend. You learn about your newfound friend, you know, in uh, wherever we are. Whether we are at our workplace, our neighbours, you know, we learn about our neighbours. We learn about the people whom we just encounter. So, we learn. 
Even we learn about newborn baby, those who have like newborn baby, infant who just born. You need to learn about the, the baby's character. Oh, this crying is actually need to change diaper. Or, or this crying needs to because she or he is hungry, right? So it's a relationship that God wants us to build with him. We learn him, we have this encounter and experience in him. He wants us to have this continuous subscription in Him. So when God, when we, when our confidence in Him, right, grow, when certain things happen, when or He prompts you to move beyond your circumstances, can you do that? That means some things that doesn't make sense. It may be like some things that doesn't make sense. Taking an offer that it doesn't make sense at all. Can you do that? It only can be done when our confidence is in the Lord. Because it's, if our confidence is in the things uh, that we can measure, in information that we gather, you know, we will not take up, the, let's say, a job offer that is low, way, way lesser than anyone else. Then our, if our confidence is on the information that we have, we will not take the offer. But if our confidence is in the Lord, what the Lord is asking us to do, that's why trust and obey, that is what the Lord delight most. So when our, our confidence is in the Lord, we will see greater things. Like I've heard about the, um, a church, a church who has like congregation very little, very small, very small congregation. But yet, because the pastor hear the Lord, and he built a very big church. Logically, I think church member. I think he has church member who object a little bit. But the thing is, when you hear the Lord, it can be. It doesn't make sense. The church congregation is so small. Let's say ten. Let's say, uh, I'm not saying that church is ten, uh, But let's say ten. But the, but God asked the pastor to build a big church. Makes sense or not? Logically, it doesn't make sense. Our human mind, we tell us that it doesn't make sense, cannot. Why? Why want to waste the resources? Am I right? We will naturally, naturally, we will gear towards that. But if the Lord has said, you know, to do that, we obey and we will reap. And the church right now grew. The church grew. This is just an example that I want to bring up. That it may not make sense to, in our mind, but... It will help us. I mean, it's like when we trust and obey. So sometimes we just have to move. We have to move to see God moves. I learn. Actually, I learn. I learned for the past one whole year. I learned. Standing up here, I learned. Hadn't I volunteer myself? I know. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, you know, when I think about it, it's like, why would I volunteer myself? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a scary thing <laughs> for me. La. Because I'm not pop, like a motivate. Uh, I don't want to be a motivational speaker. But I know that I just want to speak what God put in my heart and I learned. For the past one year, I have learned. And when I learn, I want, I want God to... Um, how is it? I, I want God to, to keep on building me from, you know, glory to glory, faith to faith. And that is what God, not just for me, but it's for every one of us. He's bringing us from glory to glory, faith to faith. In everything that you're experiencing, whether you're up and you're down, He will bring you higher. The song, Rise on Eagle's Wing. He is the one that's protecting you. He is your tower of refuge. He will see you there, but you need to have confidence in Him. Your faith, you have faith. All of us here, we have faith in Christ. That's because we believe in what Christ has done. Yes. But our confidence is in the Lord. He will see us through. Proverbs 3.26 For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep 
your food from being caught. The Lord will be your confidence because He is the source of your confidence. He will keep your food from being caught, from being trapped. He will keep you away from those because your confidence is no longer in yourself. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Same. It's no longer you who live. When you receive Christ, it's no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you. So do not fear what you don't know. Do not fear what you may not have so much information of certain things. Do not fear of what or how you relate to people. Do not have fear like, I'm not worthy enough. Hey, God says that you are worthy. Do not be afraid to step out. Do not be afraid to speak out. When I say speak out, meaning to say speak out in love. Speak out to what God is asking you to do. Now, perfect love actually casts out fear. What does this mean? We always hear this, perfect love casts out fear. I hear this preacher recently that equates fear equals faith. Hmm? What does it mean? Fear equals faith. Fear equals faith in a negative sense. You see, faith is our believing in Christ. So, if you believe in fear, you believe in what you cannot do, that will take place. But if you believe in what, in the faith, you believe in Christ himself, he will give you life, life more abundantly. So, if you, if you believe in the fear, fear itself will take place. You know, fear of sharing the good news to other people. Fear of talking to strangers. But the thing is, faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. So the more we hear God, the more we experience Him, our confidence level will grow. We will grow in Him. We will be so sure when the Lord has spoken, it's like you just know the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken this to me. You will just know. You will just know. It's just like um, I was talking to King Teng, my husband. Um, there was sometimes that uh, th there was a time that he he was asked to pray, or I also asked him to pray for people who wants to be prayed for um, to speak in tongues. Then I asked him, "How do you know that person will speak?" He said. I just know the person will speak in tongues because this is a given gift from God. When we know something, we know. We know God moves, how God moves because we are so sure. Our surety is not in our own. Our surety, our confidence is in Him because He is the one who is going to do it. He is the one who is going to bring healing. It doesn't matter whether when you pray, got healing or not. At the end of the reason, they is not us. It's Him. It is always Him. So we need to just do what the Lord wants us to do. Trust and obey. Hear the Lord and just do. Hear the Lord and just do. It's okay when we do not know a lot of things because it's somewhere in the Bible. In the Bible, it says that not everyone will know everything. Not everyone will know everything, so it is okay when you don't know. But when we know what we don't know, God also can let us learn. We can also learn. We can also learn. And the key here is love and compassion. You see, nothing, nothing works without the love of Christ in our heart. Nothing works without the love of Christ without the love and the compassion of Christ. That's why this morning, the song that we sing, or the last song that we sing, asking God to let us love the way He had loved us. We need to love beyond this church. We need to love beyond our own family members. We need to love beyond the friends. We need to love 
beyond the people we know. What I'm trying to say here is, I think you all know what I'm trying to say. We need to love beyond. When I say love, love itself, we cannot do it. Until you have the confidence, yes, Christ said that He loved you. Until you have that, you encounter that, you experience that, only you can love other people. Only you have that compassion towards a soul. Only we have the compassion to even pray for nation. You know, sometimes people say, I'm not called to pray for nation and this and that and this and that. But the thing is, if our we are built up from the love of Christ, you know, God is love. And that love is in us, lives in us. God is love. So, we, perfect love casts out fear, right? So, love takes the responsibility to cast out the fear from your life. It's no longer you who live again. It's Christ who lives in you. So, be in the deepest expression of His presence, which is love. And I want to share something. Last week, on a Sunday, during worship, I see an arrow. I see an arrow. You know, uh, an arrow. And I knew, and I knew this. God is seeking for people after His heart. The arrow is here to, it's not to hurt you, you know. The arrow is to target you. God is targeting you, you know. He's targeting you. He's targeting somebody who's going after his heart, who wants, who seek him. I see the arrow and I understand that. He's targeting us. He wants us to seek him. And he delights in that. So let God be your target. Let God be your confidant. Let the, the love of Christ just overwhelm your heart. Because above all, without love, right? Without love, we cannot just do things without love. It will be meaningless. When everything comes from love, because He is love. Everything comes from love. Everything comes from love. We are created out from His love for us. Share your deepest, most heart to Christ because He's your confidant. And be a worshipper. Be a worshipper. What does it mean, uh, worshipper? You know, I was talking to Kim Ting the other time and I was asking him, I said, um, well, it's anyone who can sing is a singer, right? So then I'm asking him, so if people who sing out of tune, are they still called singer? In my, um, in my simple mind, to me, everyone who sing, whether you're out of tune or in tune, singer lah. But then, but then to Kim Ting, he said, no, singer, you must sing in tune. So, but whatever it is, but whatever it is, what I want here, I want to point out here is, sorry? <laughs> so everyone is still a singer. <laughs> So, so what I want to say here is that whether or not we are bad singer, good singer, when you worship the Lord, you are worshipper of the Lord. You are worshipper of the Lord. Whether you sing in tune or out of tune, it doesn't matter because the Lord, the Lord looks into your heart. That is the most important thing. So that is what I was encouraged, you know, Okay, doesn't matter. Even if sometimes I sing out of tune, it's okay. It's the heart of worship. It's a heart of worship that the Lord seeks. And I want to end with this. Romans 8.35. That's the last verse. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. 
As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Next verse. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. And then the next one. It ended there, is it? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor powers, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing that you go through is too big enough for God. Nothing that is too distressing that you cannot handle. You know, sometimes you may... If you are in a position where, you know, with so many things that's happening, the storm, the turmoil, the distress, up and down, but yet you still feel peace. You still feel rest. Your confidence, you're still having this confidence in the Lord. That is good. That is good. Just know that Christ got your back. He's always with you, no matter what in your distress, in tribulation, in trials. He never leave you nor forsake you. That is the sure thing about Christ. The love of Christ, the depth of His love. Let us just have this love of Christ in our life. We need to, over, we need to be saturated in the love of Christ ourselves. We really, really need. The love of Christ is the key because Christ is the key. We need that love. Because that, that love will, will, you know, will remove every, everything that has tainted our vision. So we need to have this love of Christ. So as the worship team sing, I actually asked the worship team to sing the third song. So let the third song minister to you. Let the third song minister to you. Let him come into your life. Let him be, let the love of Christ be in your life. Ask God. You know, if you, you are, you don't feel the love for other people, then ask, ask God to do something in your life. Ask God to, to, to let you love other people. I'm talking about not just your family members, your friends, but beyond. Beyond, because we need the love of Christ, we need the compassion of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you with the love of Christ in your heart. Jesus, the perfecter of your faith, the author and finisher of your faith. The faith that you have comes from Him. Look unto Him. Yeah, let us just fix our eyes on Him and not be distracted. Fix our eyes on Him. Look unto Him. Thank you. 
take over your your current stage in life. Let God take over. You are not a singer, but you are a worshipper of the Lord. Oh, You are worshippers. Wherever you are, whether you know how to sing or not, you are worshippers of the Lord. Let God take over you, take control of your life, take over you. Take over your mind. Take over your circumstances. Take over your situation. Take over every aspect of your life. Take over your work. Take over your studies. Take over from not knowing what to do. But let God take over. He is your confidence. He is your love. He is your life. He gives you life. Life more abundantly. Yes. Open your heart. Just open your heart. Open your heart to receive Him even much more. Let Him abide in you and you abide in Him. Oh, Baharyandi. Come live in me. Oh, my love. Take over.
confident in the Lord. Be honest with God. Be honest with Him. Be, be honest with this friend. Be honest with this lover. Be honest. You can be honest. He is your confidant. You can tell your deepest, most secret or your deepest, most thing in your heart that you think that there's no one else that you can share to. But you can share it with Him. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. You don't need to look at the people around you, what they would think. You don't need to, to get recognition or get approval from other people. Your approval comes from God. He is your confidence, the source of confidence, the source of hope, the source of life, the source of joy. He's the source of everything that you have. Everything comes from Him. Yeah, everything that comes from Him. The love, His love is perfect is everlasting yes oh lord jesus let your love oh father lord so saturate every individual's heart here today oh father lord that every lives be transformed our life be transformed oh father lord that we will have revelation of your love oh father lord we will have revelation of your love daily oh papa lord we will know you deeper and deeper we will walk where you ask us to walk we will go where you ask us to go yes the lord is targeting the heart of the people he wants people to seek after his heart let god target you open your heart to let god target you say yes lord here i am here i am here i am yes so oh father lord target me if that is area, that's area that you're lacking in. Just go to God and tell God, I need this, oh Lord. I need this and I want a two-way communication with you. I don't want you to just to be a Santa Claus whereby I just submit my request. But you are beyond a request. You are beyond. You are a way maker in my life. You are my God, my super living God. You are my abundance of hope. Yes, oh Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, open up our eyes, oh Lord God, to see what you see, to love how you love, oh Father Lord. Open up our heart, oh Papa Lord. Open up our heart, oh Father Lord. Yes, oh Lord Jesus, to move in accordance to where you have placed us. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your life your life that you, we are alive because you made us alive yes oh lord jesus thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus wonderful lord wonderful lord wonderful lord yes
and I will rise on eagles' wings. Come breathe in me and Lord bless you and protect you and make his face shine upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, so Father Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. And make a commitment and tell God that yes, we will arise. We will arise from where we are. Make that commitment. Make that a commitment. And tell God that I want to love like you do. Bless you, church. Bless you to have a wonderful week ahead. Bless your family members. Bless everyone here. That the Lord keeps you and protect you wherever you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, worship team.